Hi, I'm Sam Benyako. This presentation is entitled Power Resonator Charging, Discharging, and Implication to Switched Resonant uh, Converter. The approach is intuitive, and this approach will help to, un to understand some of the intricate relationship in the charging and discharging process. Let me start off with a basic situation in which we have an input voltage which is charging a LC circuit, a resonant circuit or a resonator, through a switch which at say some time, time zero, is turned on. If it turns on, the current will start flowing through the inductor, charging the capacitor, and assuming that the losses are, are low, we'll have an inductor current which will be oscillating sinusoidally with an angular frequency of 1 over square root of LC and a frequency, of course, of omega, which is the angular frequency, over 2 pi. Or the frequency will be 1 over uh, 2 pi square root of LC, and this is uh, 1 over the period, okay? This is the period, this 1 over frequency. We also define a characteristic impedance, which is the square root of L over C. Now, as the inductor current is going up and down, the capacitor voltage is, of course, charging. And the capacitor is charging, at the point where the inductor is starting to become negative, this will be the maximum point of the inductor of the capacitor voltage. Now, why is that? Because beyond that point, the current will, in fact, discharge the capacitor, so the capacitor voltage will go down. Now, this amount here of charge is sufficient to bring up the capacitor voltage from zero to this point. This is similar to this case. In this case, the charge is sufficient to bring up the voltage from zero again to this voltage. Now, the capacitor voltage is oscillating around the a value, which is the input voltage. Why is that? Because it's steady the state the capacitor voltage, the average capacitor voltage, will match the input voltage, so there's no DC current flowing, and the AC is sort of superimposed, and therefore the capacitor voltage is around this value. So this is V in, and the peak-to-peak -peak amplitude of the capacitor voltage is twice the in. Okay, now the peak value of the inductor current, this is the peak value, is found from this expression, which is a V in over square root of LC, which is the characteristic impedance. Now the maximum value again of the capacitor will be, this value here, will be 2V in. Now suppose I'll put a diode here, excuse me, the other way, this way, and uh, the diode will allow current going this direction, but will stop current from the other direction. Therefore, it'll block all this negative part. So we we'll sort of stop here. In this case, the capacitor voltage starts from zero, going up to twice, twice V in, and it'll stop there. Okay, let's have a look now. It's a more elaborate situation, but before that, I like to present 
the very basic intuitive model of a charge capacitor. Here we have a charge capacitor with some initial value of Vc sub zero. Now this capacitor, the charge one, can be sort of uh, modeled or replaced by this basic circuit in which we have a capacitor with a zero voltage across it in series with a voltage source which is equal to the initial value of the capacitor voltage. From the outside terminal, from the two terminals, you cannot distinguish between these two circuits. They behave exactly the same. Initial voltage, of course, from here to here will be Vc sub zero. And if you're charging and discharge it, it'll look the same. I'm not talking about uh, some physical or engineering uh, aspect of uh, voltage stress on a capacitor, etc., which is really not relevant to our discussion here, which is more of a physical um, aspect. Now, using this model, let's see how we can analyze a, a little bit more elaborate situation in which we have a capacitor charged to Vc sub O, that it has a voltage across it, connected in series with an inductor. Again, we have a resonant circuit here, and shorted to ground through a diode. Actually, it doesn't have to be a diode. It's sufficient to have a switch if you will be able to uh, open it in the right time, that is when the inductor current goes to zero. Now, the switch, of course, uh, will be implemented uh, in a practical circuit by uh, a MOSFET, which is uh, controlled by some electronic circuitry. Now, the charged capacitor here is modeled by the simple model we have shown here, which is with a capacitor with zero voltage on it, a voltage source, which can be sort of redrawn to this circuit. So this circuit includes L and C, the resonant circuit, as we have it here, and a voltage source. I'm sorry, it should be like this. This is minus, if we look at this circuit this is the right direction. So the voltage here will be charged to twice the input voltage, which is twice minus 2 Vc sub zero. And the total voltage, the total voltage here will be Vc sub one, will be this voltage across the capacitor plus the original uh, voltage source, this is this voltage source. So we have that uh, Vc sub 1, the final voltage across the capacitor, is minus Vc sub 0, so that we have a sort of a flipping over of the polarity, and there is a polarity reversal. So if we start with a charge capacitor, with some voltage across it, and we short the circuit, open it as the current goes to zero, or put a diode which will stop the current, then we'll end up with the same circuit, of course, with a voltage across the capacitor which is reversed. Okay, let's see what we can do with this information farther on. Let's take now another example in which we have a input voltage which is higher than the voltage of a capacitor. So we have a, a charged capacitor, an input voltage, and therefore the capacitor will uh, still go on charging as current flows. Now again we replace the capacitor with the model 
the total voltage now is from here to here, which is V in minus uh, V C sub O, the initial voltage across the, the capacitor. And therefore, after this charging process uh, is completed, that is the current going up and goes down to zero, the inductor current or capacitor current, we end up with the following. We have twice the voltage of the total voltage imposed, which is V in minus V sub O. We have twice this value as we have found before, plus this value. And therefore, the total volume, a value from here to here will be therefore the total voltage will be 2 V in minus Vc sub O which is twice the input voltage plus VCO and we end up with this expression twice V in minus Vc sub O. Okay, now we go on with another case in which the capacitor voltage is higher than the uh, voltage source. So in this case, the capacitor will be discharging into uh, the source. Again, we replace the capacitor by the model total value of the voltage plus V out is minus VCO minus V out. And therefore, the final voltage will be twice the voltage of the capacitor. I mean, twice the initial input voltage plus VCO, and we end up with a very similar equation, in fact, the same equation, expression. So we can say that we have a capacitor with some voltage across it, and imposed to a total voltage of Vt, we end up with a capacitor voltage, which is twice the total voltage minus the um, initial voltage. Okay, let's see now how we can utilize this information to analyze a, a simple circuit, which is a switched resonator converter. This circuit includes a V1, let's say the input voltage, V2, or a load on which there is a V2, that is a, a voltage across the load. This is the load resistance. There is a filter capacitor here. And the way this circuit works is that we have an LC circuit, a resonator, which is charged when S1 is turned on this way, and then discharged when S2 is turned on this way. So energy is transferred from V1 to V2. Now the processes are the same as the one we talked about, charging and discharging of the LC circuit. Now, as we understand, the capacitor voltage will be charged to a certain value depending on V1 and the initial condition. And in particular, from the expressions we found, if we start with the capacitor voltage of Vc sub zero, we'll end up with the capacitor voltage of Vc sub one, 
which is equal to twice V in, twice this oh, V1 input voltage minus the initial value, the expression we found before. Now, S, S2 is turned on, Char discharging process of the capacitor will go on, current will go up, and then it will stop, and of course, we'll end up with some value of the capacitor voltage, which is now 2V2 minus VC1. Now, plugging in the value of VC1, we find that VC2, that is the final capacitor voltage after the uh, process is completed, that is the two switches are turned on and then off, will be 2V in from here, and then plugging in the value of V sub 1, which is, I'll write it here, 2V2 minus 2V1 plus VC0. This is the final voltage. Now, if you want this converter to be stable, then we require that the final value of the capacitor voltage, that is VC2, will be equal to the initial value. That is, that we'll end up with the same value as we have started before S1 was turned on. So this will sort of ensure stability. So this is a basic requirement. So if instead of VC sub 2, I plug VC0 here, these two cancel out, and I find that V1 equal to V2. So this converter is um, useful only for one-to-one -one or unity gain operation. Now what will happen if I force V1 and V2 to be different? That is not a load, but rather two voltage sources that put at the two ends. Now I'll find VC2 equal to VCO. This is the expression I had before, 2V1 minus 2V2, or the delta V here, that is the difference between the final value and the initial volume, is 2 times V1 minus V2. So each time this process is going on, the capacitor voltage is increasing with this delta. And obviously, this is a runaway situation that current will build up. So either it will sort of stabilize in a point in which there's a lot of losses or it will go into saturation. Anyhow, the circuit will not operate properly. So we conclude that this particular converter is useful for a one-to-one -one operation. In electronic, electronic bits 20, there is a description of a converter that is more advanced and does not suffer from this, lim this limitation. I mean, V1 equal to V2, but it can have actually a variable gain. So this actually brings me to the end of this uh, presentation. I thank you very much for your attention. Bye-bye.